Hey pilots, Drain Man here. Today I have a very special video. Today we are going to check out the brand new Flight One 4-in-1 Afterburner ESC. This is a brand new ESC. It literally just came out. They've been testing it for some time, but it literally just dropped. And right here on the Drain Man FPV channel, you're going to get to see it first. All right, so let's dive right in. The first thing I want to point out is this is the Afterburner 4-in-1. This is a 20 by 20 or a 30 by 30 stack ESC. And I am going to show that to you guys so you guys can check that out and see what that's all about. The next thing I want to point out before we rip it out of the package is there's a big label right here. And a lot of guys don't like to read the package, but right here on the package it says must use with an external capacitor they did give you one there is one in here so make sure that you use that the next thing it says is to go ahead and use BL Heli to set ESC setting PMW frequency to 48k and set the motor timing to auto for the guys that don't know how to do that I'm gonna go ahead and do that in this video so if that's what you're watching for you can skip ahead and I'll show you how to do that. Next thing I want to point out in the package is right here on the back you're given a code and every ESC has its very own code and you get a code and the code tells you that you can go to the flight1.com type in DRP and what you've got is you've got a coupon code or a inventory code whatever you want to call it that's gonna allow you to get discounted damage replacement not sure if you can see that let me get you in here see that so you're going to get discounted damage replacement. And what that's going to do is if anything happens to this ESC, you'll be able to hit up Flight 1 and depending on what went wrong, whether it's your fault, their fault, or just malfunction, whatever's going on, they're going to go ahead and accommodate you to get you back up in the air and running. And that's super awesome. I think Flight 1 is one of the very first ones to do that on an ESC or a flight controller typed electronic, you know, like... FPV electronics because we've got warranties on frames and we've got warranties on motors but to actually put it on the electronics this is the first I've ever seen of that let's go ahead and crack this puppy open I know you guys want to see it I want to see it we've seen pictures but let's actually dive in and see what it looks like alright here we go so you rip off your top and now you've got your package and your package does come sealed you're gonna have to rip it open once you've ripped it open you've got that and you've got that before you guys go don't go peeking yet let's take a look at this first so first thing we have in here is we've got our four grommets they are red because that's flight one's color the red black and white they give you two low ESR capacitors, and these are very big capacitors. They're 35 volt, but they're 1,000 microfarads. Normally, guys are running like 35 volt 420s or something like that. So these are big microfarads. So that's going to allow you a lot of extra bounce so that your video is nice and clean. Try to keep the noise down on the ESC. This ESC is designed to run in a smaller build. Now, the way they designed it, they have allowed it, you to be able to run it in a bigger build. But if you're looking for an ESC to give you super high performance, it's super high throttle, it's super high 6S batteries, then you're going to want to go ahead and move on to a bigger ESC. And that ESC will be like the Mega or the Ultra or whatever you decide to go with. Alright, let's go ahead and pull this connector out and we're going to pull our grommets out. As far as the caps go, I'll deal with those when it's time to put this in the build. Next thing we want to do is let's go ahead and dive into the actual component. Let's take a look at the actual ESC. Here we go. Wow. So that's kind of, first thing I'm seeing is it's kind of funky looking. You know, it doesn't look like a regular ESC. It's a little funky shaped, kind of cool looking. Definitely looks like they've done a ton of upgrades. I'm really liking the way this looks. I think it's really cool looking. They went ahead and made the PCB a, a different shape. You know, they could have just went with the traditional square. Let's dive in. Let's take a close look at it. See what we got. See how it's looking. Let me get you in here. There we go. All right, so first up, the PCB is red. You can see the MOSFETs are here. These are very, very small MOSFETs. 
You can tell that these are really good MOSFETs. I do want to point out, if it's hard to tell in the video, that these are metal MOSFETs. So I've got a good feeling these are going to be able to hold twice as much power and take twice as much continuous amp. Because when you're looking at an ESC, you're looking at the continuous amperage and you're looking at the burst. A lot of guys look at the burst and think that's what this thing can handle continuously and it's not. You want to pay attention to the continuous because that's what you're going to be doing. You're going to be running that amperage continuously. Now, obviously, if you don't have the burst that you need, you're not going to get what you need when you need it. But you still want to make sure you got a high continuous. So we've got our connector right here. We've got our main battery lead. So you've got your ground and your power in right here. And they do have a notch on them, which makes it good for soldering up. One thing that's been pointed out is that there is no actual metal plate here or gold plate here to be able to solder to. And some guys are upset about that. They want to be able to stick their wire right there and solder right there. Me, I don't really think it matters. We've got gold plated on each side, so it really doesn't matter because I can solder on this side or I can solder on this side. Whatever's more convenient for me, they've allowed us to have both. We've got some extra metal right here to allow current to flow good. We've got current sensing right here. This is looking really good. We've got a ton of caps for, for these two motors and we've got a ton of caps for these two motors. So far, it's looking like a very well built ESC. We've got our connector pad. I'm gonna kinda hope that on the flip side, if this gets ripped off, I've got somewhere to solder to. Oh, schnizzy. I really wasn't expecting that, but sure enough, they've laid out all eight pads right there for you how nice is that so you can just say screw it not even use this freaking connector pad but i don't know i'm gonna use it and then if something happens to it then i'll go ahead and utilize these i really really like that that's really nice they even labeled it for you isn't that nice all right so let's go ahead and do a quick little pin out on that because we've got motor pads and we've got other pads and we need to know what they are and what wires are going to go to them just in case you're unsure you might be watching this video to find out. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to point them out. So this has got the minus, so that's going to be your ground. You've got power. You've got your current sensing. You've got your telemetry, and then motors 4, 3, 2, and 1. Be sure, depending on how you mount this in your board, whether it's like this or like this or like this, that you follow these motor pads accordingly. Otherwise, actually, you know what? It's flight 1. It doesn't even matter. Just solder them anywhere and let let flight one do the rest so let's go ahead and touch on this real quick this is where you will solder up your motors okay so if you're gonna mount this in your flight controller like this you're gonna have a hard time soldering so you're probably going to end up mounting this board like this just so you can get to these pads because these pads are not accessible on both sides so keep that in mind when you go to mount this Alright, so finally I got the grommets in. You guys already know what a struggle that is. I've seen a couple people slap them all in really freaking fast. Me, I always have a hard time. I think that's probably the hardest struggle for me with dealing with these flight controllers and ESCs is the dang grommets. Any frame that can hold a 30 by 30 product, bam, there it is, it's done. Well right here you're taking this very powerful ESC and you've now given it 20 by 20 holes. I know that might not seem like a big deal, but it really, really is. It really is a big deal that I can take my frame, order this ESC and not worry about whether I have 30 by 30 or 20 by 20 holes. Because if you've ever wanted to mount 30 by 30 and you bought an ESC and haven't been able to mount it because you just didn't have the holes that you need, then you understand how important that is. That You just order it, install it, enjoy it. So as far as this side of the board goes, that's pretty much it. You solder your motors here. You've already soldered on your power and if you wanted, you've got that here. As far as an ESC goes, I mean, especially you know a four in one there's really not much to it now i do want to point out that these are f3 microcontrollers so that is a big plus that means these escs are towards the higher end of the spectrum all right so one thing i want to do is i want to talk about this guy right here this is the big bulky beautiful bolt 32 and it is a very beautiful esc you can see that i've ripped off the connector and these can be a little sensitive these really can be you can have a, a major hard crash and nothing go wrong 
and then have a small crash and this thing will just fry for absolutely no reason. A lot of guys are concerned with that. They're going to buy this. This is a top dollar ESC. This thing is 65 bucks. But I do want to say that that's not the case with this ESC and I can't speak on it 100% because I haven't personally tested it yet. But I do know something that a lot of guys don't know and on this Bolt 32 there is a regulator and that regulator is to protect this ESC. So when something goes wrong and it gets a burst of current or too many amps or something goes wrong that shouldn't have happened, it'll fry that regulator before it comes through and starts frying all your MOSFETs and everything else. So I have repaired this ESC right here twice. What does that mean? That means that when I take another ESC, one like this for example, and it's fried on me and I go and I check and all my MOSFETs are fried and there's nothing I can do about it, I'm screwed. I got to throw away this $50. But when I have an ESC like this, where when it fries, it's just the regulator, and the regulator costs, I don't know, 12 cents, I put one on and I'm back up in the air with a brand new ESC. To me, that's a very big deal, and I like that they've done that, and I know that a lot of people have been giving them a hard time about it. I just wanted to speak on that. I don't, I don't really care what people say. I know this is a good product. I've flown it, and I still fly them. I have a bunch of them, and I don't discriminate. I fly everything from KISS to Flight 1, Beta Flight. I fly it all. If it's out and it's new, I've got it, and I'm trying it out, plus I'm reviewing it for you guys. I just wanted to touch on that. Don't worry about that, guys. Don't let that stop you from getting an ESC like this, man. This thing is gorgeous. You can see they've put a lot of hard work into this. There's been quite a drought on ESCs from Flight 1. We've all been looking around trying to get them. People want to get these ESCs. They want Flight 1 and there's been a drought. Well, they decided that they're going to discontinue these and they're going to they're going to redesign them and make them better. Here it is. Here is the Afterburner by Flight 1. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. Now that I have it in my hands and I'm checking it out, jump into BL Heli and I'm going to show you guys how to set up these few peripherals you have to. It's not a big deal. Don't be worried about it. It's just a couple things we have to do. We'll do it real quick. We'll walk through it together. Then you guys will know how to do it. All right, pilots. The very next thing you're going to do is you're going to open up the BL Heli configurator. If you don't have it, you're going to need to download it. If you don't know where to download it, down in the video description, I'm going to put a link on where you can go ahead and download this configurator so that you can change these few settings and be ready to go rip and fly and have a good time. So what you need to do is, I'm not going to go ahead and plug in mine because I'm not ready yet, but I wanted to show you guys how to do this. And all you have to do is power up your quad, plug it in, make sure you hit read setup. After you've read the setup, then you're going to come right here to where it says PWM frequency. And you are going to change this to 48K. Once you have done that, you're going to head over to motor timing and decrease it all the way down to where it says auto. Click right setup and then you will be good to go. All right, pilots, I just want to dive in, take a closer look at some of the components. The main thing that I wanted to look at was the MOSFETs. They are very, very small and they are also metal MOSFETs. I wanted to get them up on the screen and get them up close and personal. I think that they're absolutely gorgeous. Taking a look at these solder joints, they look really good. There's your capacitors. Let's flip it over and take a look at our microcontroller. Everything looks like it was put together well. Good looking board. All right, pilots. The very last thing and next thing I want to do is I want to show you guys where you can go ahead and get this. And what you can do is you can go to myfpvstork.com. This is my sponsor, so this is a shout out for them. And I do want to show you that you can come here, you click on New Arrivals, and you can find it right here. This is the Flight 1 Afterburner 4-in-1 ESC. There's not many left, so be sure to jump on it right away, guys. I went ahead and got me one. They do have a reward system, so you can get some points for buying it. And the last thing I want to touch on for the sponsor is if you buy five props, you do get the six one free. There are no other stores doing that, so I definitely buy my props here, not only because they're my sponsor. I want to thank you guys for tuning in, and I'll see you on the next one.